Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Samuel Dominioni. I'm a researcher at the Security and Technology Program uh, at UNIDIR, and today I will be moderating uh, this panel on confidence building measures, uh, so-called CBMs, in the information communication uh, technologies environment. With me today to discuss um, about CBMs, there are four distinguished speakers that I'm going to introduce straight away. Uh, we have uh, Ambassador Yutaka Arima, is the Ambassador for Cyber Policy and Deputy Director General of the Foreign Policy Bureau at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. Welcome, Ambassador. We also have uh, Ms. Catherine Jones. She's the Head of uh, International Cyber Governance at the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Uh, welcome, Catherine Jones. Um, then we have uh, uh, Mr. Isaac Morales Tenorio. He is the coordinator for multidimensional security at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. Welcome. Um, thanks for joining. And last but not least, uh, uh, Ms. Kaya Tsiglic, Senior Director at Microsoft. It's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, if you want to know more about um, um, the bios of our speaker, we invite you to um, visit our conference website where you can find all the remaining information. I would like also to welcome the audience. Uh, both in person here at the Palais de Nation in Geneva and online worldwide. Speaking of the audience, I would like to briefly remind uh, um, the rule of the engagement for the Q&A sessions that we follow the roundtable discussion. Uh, as you may already know, we are using uh, uh, the Slido platform. You can just scan the QR code and, uh, on the screen or visit the website and add the code uh, that you can see uh, on the screen. Uh, once you are in, you can uh, see all questions being asked, um, rate the one you prefer, or uh, add uh, your own. Before uh, jumping into the roundtable discussion, let me uh, briefly uh, set the scene about confidence building measure and how we uh, achieved uh, where we are right now because confidence building measures are um, an old concept which uh, um, was actually born during uh, the Cold War period and they entailed the efforts to eliminate tensions which could lead state uh, at war. Most of the ex existing be uh, confidence building measures date back to 1975 uh, when the Helsinki Final Act was uh, uh, adopted by the Conference uh, uh, on Security and Cooperation in Europe. CBMs are indeed an old concept, but they do also have important applications in the field of ICTs. As the Secretary General of the United Nations affirmed in the report uh, Our Common Agenda, trust is eroding among major powers and risk to peace uh, and security are growing. In this context, cyberspace is emerging as a potential co domain of conflict. And the UN started to deal with uh, uh, the issue of international security in, in the field of ICTs uh, back in 1998, when the Russian Federation uh, proposed a draft resolution, which was then adopted by the General Assembly, with the aim of, uh, with the purpose of studies, uh, the, of study the, the emerging threats coming from this uh, uh, environment. And uh, soon after, uh, the General Assembly passed several uh, resolutions which um, established a series of uh, uh, group of governmental experts with the aim of indeed studying the emerging threats and finding uh, and uh, indeed also of trying to find possible uh, possible way to address these uh, these uh, uh, these threats and uh, among these the measures CBMs were first referred by the uh, 2010 uh, GG report uh, which also recognized uh, that there was uh, increased reporting of states uh, that were developing ICTs as an instrument of warfare. And the report indeed recommended to develop uh, confidence building measures to reduce the risk of misperceptions, yet it didn't further detail how to do that. Um, the next um, GG, uh, so the Group of Governmental Expert Report, which was adopted in 2013, um, included a section on confidence-building confidence measures, um, and uh, they uh, 
basically, in, in, this, in this report, it was mentioned the importance of transparency, predictability, uh, and cooperation. Um, the recommendations were mostly focused on exchange information with, the, again, the risk of possible reducing uh, misperceptions. The real breakthrough uh, arrived with the 2015 um, reports by the GGE, which reiterates the uh, measures so far agreed upon, but also developed new one for a total of 14 CBMs, and the list provided uh, uh, with more operational measures, and at the same time uh, a framework um, that could be used by bilateral, multilateral, and regional uh, cooperation organizations uh, to enhance or develop their own. For example, the identification of uh, appropriate point of contacts at the policy and technical levels uh, to address serious ICT incidents or the voluntary provision by states uh, of their own national uh, views of categories of, infra of uh, infrastructure that they consider critical and how they were meant to, uh, to protect them. As we know, in 2018, uh, the General Assembly, uh, General Assembly adopted two uh, different resolutions that established two group of experts, one for, uh, that gave the birth to the sixth GG and the other one um, with uh, the creation of a new open-ended uh, working group. Both processes, as we know, came to a positive conclusion, and they both, in their report, referred to uh, the CPMs. The GG restructure actually uh, provided with a, 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 a more clear structure of uh, CBMs distinguishing between uh, cooperative measures and transparency measures, and it added also more operational indications on how to implement them, and they also put more emphasis on capacity building. On the other side, the OWG report recognized uh, that the confidence building measures were important to preventing conflicts and uh, acknowledge that practical CBMs had been recommended in previous GG reports. Um, it's with some proud that we also affirm that both these reports recognize Unity Cyber Policy Portal as a confidence building tool. Um, so we achieved quite a lot in these uh, um, past decades, of course, a lot yet remain to be done. And uh, further topics would require uh, additional considerations uh, for the, uh, by the open-ended working group um, that is about to kick off with the first substantial, substantial session. And in light of this, uh, we identified a few issues on which we would like the speakers um, to elaborate um, on, which include, for example, how can the OAWG support state engaging in transparency measures as with sharing of relevant information and lesson learned? How can the OWG support states that are not part of a regional organizations or are part of regional organizations that has yet to develop their own set of CPMs? How can the OWG leverage initiatives led by non-state actors, including the private sector, that could contribute to share goals of transparency, information sharing, and cooperation. So with this in mind, I would like to now give the floor um, to our uh, panelists and our first uh, guest. Uh, I would like to, um, as a, our first guest, I would like to address uh, um, uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Arima, uh, and it would be very interesting to, uh, to uh, hear your uh, views on these opening issues. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Samuel. Uh, I am uh, very honored uh, to be invited as a panelist uh, to this uh, um, important uh, discussion organized by Yinder, uh, and I would like to thank everyone who, uh, who helped to organize this. Japan strongly supports confidence building measures uh, as having dialogue or, or uh, for example, uh, understanding the cyber policies and activities of other countries helps to prevent escalation of tension within cyberspace due to misperception and misunderstanding. Mutual understanding between different governments is important in cyberspace. Uh, Japan regularly carries out cyber dialogue with various countries to exchange views on cyber policies and activities. Engagement within a regional framework is also important. Japan has co-chaired a cybersecurity uh, 
related meetings with Malaysia and Singapore within ASEAN Regional Forum. Uh, it was a good opportunity to share each country's uh, respective cyber policies, as well as to exchange views on region-wide region cyber activities. As the OEWG report had concluded, uh, the OEG itself, with all UN members participating and a wide group of stakeholders engaging in the discussion, has an important role as a confidence building measure. Member states uh, can uh, share their cyber policies and views on relevant issues in the OEWG. The OEWG could then possibly have an annex to the annual progress report that compiles the national policies of participating countries or have links, to, uh, links on the official website of the OEWG that will lead to the re relevant links of the participating member states. Uh, information, other information shared in the OEWG meetings could also be stockpiled with the official website of the OEWG. The last OEWG took the multi-stake, uh, state, uh, stake, multi-stakeholder approach, uh, and had the participation of the civil society, academia, and the business community, in addition to member states, which enriched the discussion uh, and made the OEWG even more informative. Let's talk cyber. Uh, held in December 2020 was a good example of the multi-stakeholder approach. We should also utilize the virtual participation amid the COVID-19 uh, pandemic so that even more stakeholders can participate. The multi-stakeholder approach will promote mutual understanding between different players, such as governments, the private sector, and academia, which is also important for the development uh, of cyberspace. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I really would like to emphasize that Japan uh, strongly believes confidence building measures, which, uh, uh, which builds trust amongst the different players uh, in cyberspace is uh, extremely important for the stability and development uh, of cyberspace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And uh, um, I, I wanted now to, to give the floor to uh, Ms. Catherine Jones uh, from UK. And uh, you, you, Ambassador, you mentioned um, the importance of engaging with the regional framework. Uh, and maybe if, uh, Catherine Jones can also elaborate a bit on um, the role of uh, uh, OSCE uh, um, in, 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 this, uh, in this field. Uh, Ms. Catherine Jones, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Samuel. Um, it's great to be back here at UNIDI uh, and among friends. Um, the UK has uh, cyber exchanges regularly with both Mexico and with uh, Japan, and of course, actually directly with Microsoft as well on cyber issues. So great to see our friends here. Um, for me, the 2021 OEWG report summed up CBMs when it called them a concrete expression of international cooperation. They're an element of humanity in a cyber focused discussion. So you can build or you can try and build predictability into technology, but with humans, there's really no shortcuts at all. Growing confidence um, really takes long term commitment and effort. So in broad terms, I think there's two ways that the OEWG can make substantive progress in the coming period on confidence building measures. Firstly, it can continue the conversation. So Whatever our preferences for specific modes of discussion, we need to keep talking. And right now, the OEWG is the place that we do that. And we're going to continue to need global dialogue as the baseline confidence building measure for, for many years to come. As I say, confidence building is a, is a long journey. It has ups and downs. It gets pulled off course by different factors. Um, so a strong foundation in which to base our discussion is crucial to keep us moving forwards. Secondly, I think that OEWG can move forward into implementation of confidence building measures. So talking is good and we really need that, but doing is, is better. Um, so we must all recommit to the confidence building measures um, that we have on a global, regional or bilateral basis and really get on with the work of making things happen. Um, so your question is something well about regional organisations of which, of course, the UK participates in the OSCE in this regard. Um, I think we, uh, we need to unpack a little. So why do we look at confidence building measures in a regional context? For me, that's also about the implementation angle. So the UN has a, a strong role on global confidence building measures, but we've seen regional organisations really pick up these um, confidence building measures and work to adapt them to regional contexts and priorities. And progress has tended to be faster at the regional level. Um, it's obviously easier to build confidence within an established relationship. And of course, regional fora such as the OSCE already made resource pools, which reduce the cost to individual states of having to build bilateral CBMs one by one. 
but ill-distributed regional progress can't secure total stability. So the interconnected nature of cyberspace means that we need to progress this across all states. And where a state isn't part of a regional grouping that's looking at CBMs, I think the resource cost of implementation falls very heavily on the state to conduct those exchanges in a bilateral context. And perhaps that state will choose to invest in exchange uh, with a state with whom they have a strong relationship, rather than one where the risk of conflict and escalation is actually higher. So the UN really fills a gap here through sharing experience and by providing a space in which avenues for collaboration and mutual learning can be established. Uh, and of course, where 193 member states sit round uh, a table together, we can hear both from our closest and from less close friends um, without needing to reach out bilaterally. Um, the membership of the UN is, of course, a really diverse group of states and, and we're never all going to take the same approach on everything. And we don't we don't need to. But we do need to understand how other states see things and crucially how they might act in cyberspace so as to avoid that misunderstanding and inadvertent escalation. So the OEWG is already supporting transparency at the most basic level. Uh, and in securing consensus adoption of the latest resolution, we've again seen states publicly reiterate their commitment to the framework of responsible state behaviour in cyberspace. And that's a really important starting point in transparency. But we need to go much further and deeper uh, in this round. So the annex of national position statements to the GGE report from 2021 was a, a really tangible example of a transparency CBM where states committed to sharing their views for the benefit of stability and predictability in cyberspace and we'd like to see more of this. But of course some states have yet to develop those positions um, so sharing what they have already developed and in particular I think national strategies is key here. I hope to see discussion in the upcoming OEWG of how we can support states to develop and review their national strategies based on their own needs assessments um, so as to eventually further our understanding of each state's approach. And of course, the UNIDEA policy portal is an important tool for making that information readily available. And we very much value it, Samuel, thank you. So on transparency, I would also highlight the call in the 2021 GG report that states should clarify their positions on their ICT security agency's mission and functions, uh, as well as their ICT strategy at the national and organizational level, and the legal and oversight regimes under which those um, agencies operate. This because whether we like what a state is doing or not, if we understand those broader patterns of behaviour, uh, we can more easily mitigate risks to international peace and stability. And so that's why the UK has been very upfront about its intention to develop certain capabilities, as well as the legislative framework that underpins those capabilities to ensure they can only be used in accordance with obligations under international law and in line with the framework. And of course, we'd welcome others taking the opportunity to be transparent and open about their intentions in this regard. And finally, Samuel, I'm going to not directly address your question on stakeholders as a standalone question. Um, in bringing initiatives to the table at the OEWG, um, the UK is aiming to move from talking about stakeholder inclusion to making it happen. So we aim to partner with or draw substantively on st stakeholder led work for much of our input. Um, and I hope this will show a very tangible route to realising the contribution of stakeholders, both on confidence building measures and beyond. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, um, Catherine. It was a very insightful um, uh, intervention uh, and comprehensive, uh, and uh, you touch upon uh, different uh, different items, and um, you almost covered um, all the issues that we were uh, uh, trying to address uh, with our opening question. And uh, I would like now to uh, give the floor to Isaac Morales and see uh, his, his perspective, and also if he can elaborate a bit on how the uh, OS is uh, uh, developing and implementing uh, the uh, cyber, uh, the comfortability measures um, in, uh, in his organization. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Samuel, for giving me the floor. Um, first, uh, just uh, let me express my gratitude um, and recognition to, to UNIDIR uh, for organizing such a timely discussion um, as we have, uh, uh, we will face uh, in, in, in less than two weeks, uh, uh, the, continue, the, 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 the first initial uh, substantive uh, session of the open-ended working group. And thanks also for giving me the opportunity to, to join such a, such a 
such a great uh, panel with uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, I hope sincerely next time I'll see you in person. Um, thanks, Samuel, uh, also for introducing the topic in a very clear way and for the initial questions. As it is key to me to emphasize the importance of the UN processes, both the EGE, the Open Networking Group, and their reports adopted by consensus, as it has said, um, which have established what I, I can affirm it's a framework, international framework on these on these issues. Building upon uh, what my dear colleagues have said, uh, these processes consolidated a common ground to better address malicious, hostile, and unlawful uses of cyberspace and digital technologies in general. Actually, they have set the tone for international cooperation and have reaffirmed international law applicability and multilateralism as an effective platform to put cyber diplomacy into practice. Then we can now say that we do have this international framework. And in this regard, just let me share three uh, uh, initial crucial elements um, to emphasize the relevance of the CBMs in this framework. Uh, the first element uh, that I want to emphasize is the peace approach considered through the CBMs. Um, uh, it is important to reiterate that the CBMs, and as you mentioned uh, um, uh, in the introduction, that they are part of the tools and measures to prevent conflicts, of course, to promote a peaceful settlement of disputes and to prevent any escalation of, um, of, of, of disputes and, and, and conflicts. But they also are part of the tools that we can consider to promote peaceful uses. I mean, not only to prevent, but to promote, to encourage member states to use um, uh, the cyberspace and, and the technologies related um, under a uh, peaceful uh, approach. Uh, from the UN and, and also from the regional level, the OAS and other organizations, we do have substantive experiences on CBMs. Um, uh, many good experiences, other perhaps that some experiences that they have just not worked, something like that. But in different fields of international uh, security, we have now this substantive experience. And now that we have um, CBMs also to cyberspace issue, it will be important to take always into account those experiences to advance or decide to advance further on CBMs uh, in, in, the, in the cyberspace realm. The second element I want to emphasize in general is integrality. Um, the CBMs uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, they are a part of the integral considerations coming from this framework, I mean, from the open-ended working group and GGE processes. The implementation of uh, the non-binding norms, the reaffirmation of the applicability of international law in cyberspace are also uh, linked to the implementation of the CBMs. Actually, CBMs uh, are uh, very, very um, um, uh, linked to the identification and, and, and dealing with threats and challenges, and also on the comprehensive commitments to encourage more cooperation and capacity building program. To put into practice CBMs, for instance, it is necessary to encourage uh, more detail and more concrete cooperation and capacity building programs. That is why I, I just want to, to reaffirm this integrality um, uh, where the CBMs are a key part of, of the whole framework. And the third element, uh, um, uh, also important to emphasize the importance of the, of, of the, of the CBMs, um, is um, that they are somehow, the CBMs, um, a clear expression um, of the tools driving the states to action. Um, these uh, CBMs and these uh, uh, tools, if, if we can refer as tools, um, are encouraging us, all of us, at the internal level, at the national level, at the regional level, at, and the international level, to put into practice something. I mean, to go to action. 
And uh, as you know uh, from its uh, 2010 report, the GGE recommended further steps for the development of confidence building um, measures. And of course, with the recent uh, reports, we have more concrete elements to put into practice. Then the call made by my colleagues on implementation, it is crucial. Um, uh, we do need to implement that, wa that uh, what we have now as, as a framework. Um, cyber confidence building measures defined so far by the GGE reports and the open-ended working group uh, could be, of course, considered precursors of political will and commitment to the collective endorsement and implementation of the voluntary norms, for instance, of responsible state behavior in cyberspace. And taking into account of this element, just let me uh, briefly uh, refer that step by step in the Americas, a more formal and continuous dialogue on cyberspace has been consolidated, particularly due to the work of the OAS. We have seen an increasing relevance of discussions related to cybersecurity, the applicability of the international law and cyberspace governance in general. And taking into account these recommendations coming from the international framework, from the UN, and addressing the need to increase cooperation, transparency, predictability, and instability, um, um, uh, member states of the OAS decided uh, from uh, uh, 2017 to create a working group on cooperation and confidence building measures in cyberspace. Uh, it's interesting because it's linking uh, the, the, the name, uh, it's linking both the cooperation and confidence building measures from the very beginning, from the very establishment of this uh, working group. Uh, this all uh, within the framework of the Inter-American Committee Against Terrorism. Um, we have had a, 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 a regional work coming from this working group, and now um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to share that Mexico is now uh, um, uh, chairing this working group, and we are decided to go further on um, these discussions and, of course, linking the uh, uh, UN discussions with the regional discussions and to, to call also from the regional level to this implementation. Um, the role of uh, other stakeholders and service providers, private sector, um, uh, uh, civil society, academia, it is key also not only to um, um, uh, encourage member states to put into practice this, but also to help them to put into practice some of the most operative elements related to the CBMs. I will let here and perhaps we can uh, uh, de um, um, develop some elements further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isaac. Uh, um, yes, I mean, uh, you opened the floor for many uh, um, uh, topics on which we can follow up uh, um, later, but uh, last but not least, you mentioned uh, you pull in actually the private sector, so what a better uh, introduction to uh, uh, Kaya. And so uh, it would be uh, very interesting for us to also understand the different perspective uh, on confidentiality measures. And so uh, I would also like you to expand a bit or elaborate a little bit more on, for example, the Tech Accord, which uh, um, uh, published a, a series of, of, uh, of uh, uh, CBMs uh, um, a couple of years ago. Uh, the floor is yours, Kaya. Um, thank you, and I also it's great to see everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Also, I've not realized Isaac has a really fluffy cat, but so that was nice to see. Uh, but uh, the um, I, 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 I'm going to be fairly brief and kind of touch on some of the points that were set already and try to add a little bit of a private sector perspective um, on it. And, and the reason why I'm going to be fairly brief is because I've agreed with a lot of things that have been said. Um, which uh, it's, I don't want to necessarily repeat myself. Um, I think the importance of um, the, as Catherine was saying in particular, the importance of the human role in uh, this space cannot be underestimated. Um, you know, th there's lots of things that we are trying to do from a technical perspective. There are lots of things we're trying to do from a policy perspective, but at the end of the day, uh, the, like she said, there are uh, we are all humans, and I think the the trust um, that we have in each other, whether it is in civil society, private sector, or in governments, and irrespective of where in the world, I think it's the thing that will drive um, our ability to 
to use um, and leverage the online environment to sort of society's benefit. Um, in terms of what we um, um, uh, are would like to see uh, um, in the open and the working group going forward is um, continued focus on on this space. I think the importance of um, having regular conversations, including with uh, groups that are not necessarily close to you, um, I think is uh, uh, incredibly important. Um, and it's also um, very important from that in that regard that the conversations are do, do not necessarily stay at the very the theoretical level, but that that they are perhaps supplemented by, by things like exercises. I know not necessary in the formal open ended working group discussions, but sort of in addition um, that demonstrate uh, what a real life situation where you would need to cooperate with your counterparts in different countries and in different sectors um, would uh, would actually be a, an added bonus. Um, as it would ex explain, it, it, it just in our experience has makes it much more real. Um, and with that in mind, I would also encourage the open ended working group to, in particular in this regard, to rely on um, outside non state perspectives. Um, the, and, you know, private sector specifically has its private sector and technical communities uh, for specifically have an important role to play when it comes to response and preventing escalation. Um, and and I, and are often called in and at a national level, um, and when something like something happens, um, I I think it is important that we uh, work together to ensure that there is a cross sectoral conversation going on, cross sectoral and cross country conversation going on um, around um, a sort of incidents in particular. Um, I would say not necessarily just from a peace perspective, although clearly this is a guiding principle um, in, in, in the open ended working groups discussions, but also from a, from a just security perspective. Um, oftentimes where something happens, you know, we don't necessarily immediately know what the, what the cause is, who the perpetrator is, uh, but there is a need to work together to solve the problem. Um, so, with that in mind, I would think about also not just looking at confidence building measures that look at the diplomatic community uh, or the policy community, as it was discussed, but also particularly um, at the technical community. Um, you know, we see um, first the sort of the organization bringing our, um, bringing together certs um, around the world as a very effective uh, measure of this um, and I think initiatives like that and initiatives that support um, capacity building inserts and capacity building that involves confidence building measures for certs I think it's something that um, we should not necessarily forget um, you also um, mentioned the cybersecurity tech accord um, agreed I think there are there are things that uh, companies can do to build trust amongst each other. You know, some of it is a work that is done through uh, various ISACs, information sharing organizations, um, where um, companies exchange information, um, share threat intelligence with each other, and then potentially also with governments and others um, to ensure that um, we, uh, we can get a better picture of what is going on in a particular uh, point in time. So there are these formal structures that um, we'd encourage uh, countries to look at. And then there's also informal relationships. Um, I think the, the the example that's just about a year old right now, I think I would say is the solar winds hack, um, which happened, I think literally, or was discovered literally um, a year ago. Um, and that was, uh, clearly, it was a call from um, our, colleague, our colleagues at FireR, another security company, um, that alerted us to something happening on our own system. And then we worked together behind the scenes to the issue protections, understand what was happening before it actually broke publicly. So 
collaborations like this um, are also really important, just private sector to private sector. Um, and then there are principles like the ones uh, issued uh, through the Cybersecurity Tech Accord that look to demonstrate not just up to others in the industry, but others in the civil society, others in, in the governments um, that, you know, what certain what, what certain private sector participates uh, participants are ready or not ready to do, um, and, and what are they on security issues, or you know, secu could be security, could be privacy, could be the use of particular technologies like facial recognition, um, which are also important, um, I think, markers uh, when it comes to discussions um, in in on broader discussions on peace and security. So I would probably end with that. I would just underline the, the importance of not forgetting the technical communities when it comes to um, the confidence building measures and hoping that uh, we can do, we can use the opportunity of the open ended working group to both drive implementation um, and increase transparency across the board. Thank you very much, Kaya. Uh, building on this and also building on uh, um, some of the concepts that you use uh, throughout your interventions, which are key also for, uh, for, uh, for our uh, panel, uh, which are transparency and, and, and communication, so the importance of keep on having a dialogue. Uh, let's say that uh, the underpinning uh, uh, element of uh, transparency and uh, communication, so the underpinning element of dialogue, uh, is uh, to speak like uh, the same language. And so uh, on this, I would like you to ask to what extent the next uh, um, uh, open-ended working group can actually help to identify a common terminology, a common uh, understanding of concepts. And I'm also referring to uh, the, the summary, con the, the chair uh, conclusions uh, of, uh, of, of the previous OAWG. So what are your uh, perspective on this, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, topic? So basically finding a common language uh, to address uh, uh, transparency, which I address. That is at the base. It's at the, uh, of the, uh, um, it's the common element that would uh, uh, allow better communication and then a, a, a better, um, better transparency. Um, if you uh, don't mind, I would start again the, with the roundtable. And so uh, uh, I don't know if Ambassador uh, would like to um, to intervene on this uh, on this uh, uh, topic. Thank you very much, uh, Samuel. Um... I think um, conceptually, uh, what we would like uh, for the OEWG to achieve is for our member states, more member states, or a substantial number of member states, hopefully all of the member states, to have a, a level of understanding of cyberspace uh, that will uh, make it easier for them to understand what other countries are doing, uh, and that for all the, uh, the member states to share uh, their uh, policies and ideas and activities in cyberspace. At the same time, um, uh, you know, realistically speaking, um, how to measure that uh, in concrete terms, uh, that is a very, uh, it, uh, that's a very difficult, I mean, you know, how do, how do, how do you measure success in, in confidence building? Uh, as uh, Kat had stated, it, there is a lot of human factor and then, you know, there are certain uh, things you can share, information you can share, but whether a level of trust, uh, you know, grows or not uh, is another matter. Uh, and so um, I don't have a great answer uh, for the very important question that you pose, uh, but I do hope that at least, uh, say, for example, we, we will have a lot of uh, policies posted on, 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 the, uh, on the website, uh, and we will we hope that uh, there may be uh, Maybe joint exercises uh, as a result of these uh, discussions, or uh, cooperative measures, uh, uh, the regular uh, discussions uh, and then cooperative activities that the member states will take part in uh, to uh, to enhance uh, trust uh, amongst each other uh, in cyberspace. Uh, I will stop there, uh, and I'd like I, I most definitely would like to hear the views of others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, uh, Catherine Jones, would you like to elaborate a bit on this? Uh, thank you, Samuel. Um, I think terminology is a very um, challenging point. So I think as I said uh, in my first uh, comments, we don't all have to do this things, everything the same way, but we do need to understand each other. 
uh, and be able to uh, kind of understand where each other is coming from. Now, culturally and linguistically, we all conceptualize things differently. And we see this very much in, in this area where um, cyber means one thing, information security means one thing. Some people think about data, some people think about infrastructure, and we all conceptualize it very differently. So I think for the most part, um, the, where I'd like to see progress with regards to terminology is that kind of understanding between different states as to what matters to each other and how we talk about it. There's a further step um, about using the same terminology which um, as each other, which I think we have done some in, in the UN in terms of we've agreed language that we use um, in our reports from the GGEs and the OEWG and we all um, know what that means between us, um, whether or not that's the language we might actually use in our home nations or not, we understand um, what it points to. Um, but I think beyond that, it's quite difficult um, to align all these different uh, conceptual frameworks into, into one um, clear um, set of terminology that we could all agree on. Of course, the, the place where that is um, different is when you are negotiating um, legally binding agreements where you do all need to have the same terminology for the same uh, uh, constructs so that you are very clear between yourselves as what you are agreeing to. Um, but in the first committee, obviously, in the OEWG, we're not in that situation at the moment. So I think we still have that building of understanding is our main main challenge here. Thank you very much. Uh, Catherine, um, Isaac, would you, would you add something, uh, some of your thoughts on this, uh, on this topic? Thanks. Yes, I, actually, I will say that um, a more formal and continuous dialogue on cyberspace, um, which is expected we will have uh, in the, in the uh, open-ended working group, uh, is indeed a great opportunity to further advance on the implementation of all that we now have. So in this regard, I won't expect to step back on the implementation because of a lack of universal understanding on a concrete term. For instance, um, uh, confidence building, perhaps confidence building, uh, it is not uh, 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 universally understood in, in exactly the same way, but we do need to increase the confidence building and then we do need more measures and then we do need to commit ourselves to implement th that we have. Um, then instead of uh, stepping back uh, because of a uh, lack of universal understanding on a very concrete term, uh, it is important to step forward on the goals and commitments that actually we do have from these recent uh, um, uh, uh, reports adopted uh, by consensus and as I said, that establish somehow a framework for, for this. Um, then uh, calling to the implementation and calling to somehow standardizing interactions on, in cyberspace under this framework, it will be important um, from my point of view to avoid any, any, any very detailed uh, uh, um, discussion on very concrete terms that actually from the national level, the regional level, and international level, we could have um, minor uh, uh, differences on the understanding of them, but that have not been an obstacle to further advance at the three levels, the national, the regional, and the international. Um, and, and concretely referring, for instance, for confidence building um, in this regard, we do need also to remember that in front of gradual processes. And it has been shown that significant progress needs to be achieved on a step-by-step -step basis uh, 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 to identify with the greatest possible degree of clarity all those factors which could adversely affect mutual trust in a given situation. And I don't see that a term or terminology or a very concrete concept will indeed fit in this, in this category. And, and, and as example, I can refer briefly to the OAS working group, where perhaps not having the same understanding on the terms, we have been able 
to advance on the adoption of CBMs and on the adoption and, and, and promotion of uh, a very uh, oriented uh, cooperation uh, program within the OAS. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. Uh, I will probably then follow up uh, uh, to you, with you uh, also by uh, mentioning to one of the questions that we received from the uh, audience. But before doing that, uh, uh, I will leave the floor to Kaya to comment on, uh, on the previous one. Thanks. I think um, the one thing that I would say, and I would, you know, trying to be a little, just a little bit more concrete, uh, but basically saying the same thing that was mentioned. I think the, in, this is an iterative process. And the open-ended working group over the next uh, four years or so, you know, has the opportunity to 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 promote it and serve as a forcing function to for uh, countries and others uh, to 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 be demonstrating what kind of progress they're making. I'm not saying that necessarily. You know, they're clearly not all countries will submit progress reports or something like that, but I think there is an opportunity for the chair to potentially collect, you know, information on um, points of contact to the one that everybody is, um, you know, is, is the most I think, acceptable uh, um, confidence building measure. Or on, or or even on, um, you know, on sort of just uh, the information of on how different countries see their cyber command, or if they have a cyber command. You know, there's different uh, ways that effectively implementation of the norms um, can be can be used as a confidence building measure. And perhaps that is something that is. Um, that is collected at the end of every of the every year as we go through the open and working working group and and sort of collected as an annex uploaded on the unit or portal something like that that it's it, it demonstrates incremental um or collects inf information incrementally not all states will have to do it not all states will have the, uh, the same approaches but there will be more and more information and hopefully over time more and more understanding of where states stand, how do they feel about a particular issue, um, and effectively building confidence. Um, so I would just maybe put this concrete example to, on to the table to uh, for discussion. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to go back to what Isaac uh, Morales uh, said, uh, in particular uh, regarding the fact that uh, we don't need like a specific uh, uh, terminology to build up cyber confidence building measures, and you, pro you gave the example of, of the uh, OIS. Uh, I'm wondering uh, uh, whether this would be applicable, and, and again, this is also a matter of uh, how the OAWG could uh, further push on this direction when it comes to different uh, uh, organizations in different regions of the world. Thank you. Thank you for, for going back to, to these uh, key questions. I, I do believe, I do believe that um, uh, the more uh, interregional conversations, the better for the uh, international level discussion. I mean, for the open-ended working group and the UN level discussion. Um, um, even when we at the, at the, at the, I mean, the starting point is the national level. Uh, at the national level, we do have different uh, authorities and different uh, um, uh, mandates, uh, etc. And each of them have uh, some some understandings, concrete understanding and concrete um, uh, concerns and priorities. So the, the 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 building of confidence starts at the national level. Once having this consolidated view at the national level, at the regional level, it is important because you share most of the concerns and you share most of the um, uh, elements to 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 advance on cyberspace with the region. Um, and at the same time, uh, you are uh, feeding the international um, uh, discussions with the regional setting. And at the same time, or, or, or well, in a two-way uh, structure, um, the regional organizations or the regional uh, or sub-regional conversation could uh, further implement what we have 
from the uh, UN level. I can I can refer, for instance, recently um, at the at the North American summit, uh, um, uh, Canada, U.S. in in Mexico, um, they advance on uh, uh, further discussion on cyberspace, taking into account the framework of responsible state behavior coming from the UN. So this is a very concrete example of how we can refer to the international commitments and advancements at the national, international, and regional concretely level. And, and just finally, um, uh, to, to insist, um, the more inter-regional interactions, dialogues, and sharing of experiences, the better for the UN uh, level processes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Maybe, uh, Ambassador, you can, uh, um, you can enlighten us with uh, your experience or Japanese experience uh, in dealing with uh, an, or, an organization, ASEAN, uh, in particular in, uh, in, uh, in the Asian um, uh, Forum, uh, and how they managed to develop uh, uh, CBMs uh, even with countries that are not part of the, of the same organization. Samuel, thank you very much. Um... In terms of, uh, I guess we, you know, we're part of uh, ARF, uh, and then we are having discussions uh, on on confidence building measures within the framework of ARF. Uh, but in terms of engaging countries that are outside of uh, ARF, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry to say that we don't, the, you know, that that is not that's not the kind of experience that we've had. But ARF in of itself actually uh, is ASEAN plus their partners so it's an it's an ASEAN outreach if you if you see it from the ASEAN perspective uh, and it is a, a framework that's been established for a very long time and there is trust amongst uh, the uh, the uh, the countries at least to have dialogue on on issues wide-ranging issues uh, and uh, so um, I would say that uh, from the you know I, I, I'm not seeing it from the regional organization perspective but if I you know, looking at it from a partner that is engaging a regional organization, um, uh, you know, we we would we would uh, appreciate the regional organizations reaching out to countries like us uh, to have dialogue, and we actually have a bilateral Japan ASEAN dialogue as well, uh, and we would uh, hope that we'll be uh, able to exchange views, information, uh, and uh, and build a strong confidence uh, in 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 cyberspace. Uh, I also do have to caution that even within an organization, the, the level of understanding on these issues uh, vary widely uh, and that you have to take into account that just because they are part of an organization doesn't necessarily or doesn't mean that everyone in that organization has the same level of understanding when you have dialogue. Um, so uh, I wasn't quite able to, uh, to, uh, to specifically answer your question, but I hope... Uh, I give you some context as to how uh, dialogue with uh, regional organizations and individual countries occur. Thank you. Yes, indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine. Do you have uh, uh, any thoughts uh, on on how to uh, increase uh, interregional uh, dialogue uh, within uh, the CBM's uh, uh, context? Thanks, Samuel. And it's um, really good to to build on um, Isaac and Ambassador Rima's uh, comments there. I think. Um, there's some very concrete things uh, that we can do as individual states in terms of working with our where we are members of a regional organisation, working with the secretariat of um, the the uh, track uh, the cyber track within that organisation. Um, first, to ensure that they they are following the discussions and have a full awareness of CBMs and and the discussion at the global level, but then also to work with um, that secretariat to um, apply those global CBMs to the regional level. So I think there's a, a real onus on member states to work with the secretariat in that regard. And once that's been done, I think then there's also um, for the secretariat, but it comes from member states to say, yes, we'd like to expand this conversation out to more people. So, for instance, the OSCE, um, we have dialogue uh, with additional non-OSCE member states um, where they come in and, and we talk about confidence building measures. And that's come through member states saying to the secretariat, yes, we'd like to we'd like to expand this conversation and have some additional partners in the room to to follow these discussions very much in the way that Ambassador Rima was just saying about the ARF. So I think um, 
whilst there's a there's a an ask of coordination on the secretariats of the regional organizations i think it has to come obviously from member states to to drive that demand um and i think there's also then that question about um we're still quite um immature in some of that um engagement and as we go further and more regional organizations perhaps have um a, a track discussing cyber cbms and uh, looking to implement those how we do more together than um just the talking about our cbms and your cbms um, but perhaps move into a more exercising the points of contacts between the different regional organizations or whatever the kind of implementation phase of that looks like um, and whether we want to start to try to do that between two regional organizations who are well established or whether um, in this regard or whether we do it a regional organization and some partners or how we make that happen and eventually how we make that happen you know in a, in a more global um, context because obviously there are states who who either aren't in regional organizations that have a cyber CBMs track or just aren't really have access to a regional organization in this context at all. So we do need to broaden and, and, and widen um, those opportunities for engagement there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, have a look at the at the questions that uh, at the further questions that came up to this uh, for this panel, and maybe uh, I can pick one uh, which is quite provocative, uh, which says that uh, one of the biggest challenges of CBM is the state's ability and uh, history of fulfilling promises of commitments. What measures could be taken to uh, for accountability regarding this? Uh, I don't know, uh, Catherine, you're already there. Would you like to uh, elaborate on this and then we go for another tour of the table? Thanks. Of course. Um, I think, I mean, this is a, obviously a real challenge um, and we see it, um, I said in my first intervention, um, these discussions go through ups and downs and different factors outside of the negotiations have a lot of um, sway in how the negotiations are going. And that really does... Um, kind of reflect back on how one state perceives another state to be acting and what that um, does more broadly to their interpretation of their relationship with that state. Um, so I think um, it's very much, it's quite easy to talk about confidence building measures and cyber confidence building measures obviously are um, really important to put your focus into, but it's also about the wider action and how a state um, presents itself beyond those conversations. Um, so is a state um, generally perceived as acting responsibly? Are they trying to be transparent and cooperative? Or are they regularly choosing to be confrontational or um, to be seen to be doing thing, saying one thing and doing another? Outside of even the, the cyber context is a, is a major factor in that regard. So I think um, there's a certainly an element of talking the talk but then there very much has to be an element of walking the walk as well are you behaving responsibly and I think that's where this conversation is really crucial because we have to um, be clear between states and this is what the framework does what is responsible behavior and it's really by showing that you are adhering to the framework that we have all agreed um, that you build that confidence so the dialogues themselves or a crucial expression of that, a willingness to engage and understand each other. But if um, a state is clearly not adhering to the framework, then it can be very hard to build that, that confidence, uh, even if you are having a dialogue. Um, so I think there's a, there's a broader issue there. Thank you very much. Um, Ambassador, would you like uh, to uh, add some thoughts on these uh, questions about accountability? Yeah, I think I did mention this as well, but I think it is, uh... This is a very difficult issue. Uh, I guess first we have to agree on the, obviously the the uh, um, uh, norms or responsible state uh, behavior, which uh, we have in a way uh, with the DGE uh, and the uh, OEWG report. But you're asking, you know, trust but verify kind of a question. Uh, and in cyberspace, uh, in many cases, uh, because of the uh, the technical nature uh, of, of 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 cyber uh, itself. Uh, unless you have you are your 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 country is extremely uh, capable has a, you know extremely well qualified uh, capable uh, people in that regard, you will not be able to verify uh, that uh, behavior. Uh, and if there's a malicious activity, uh, if that is coming from 
a country that is, that claims to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, abiding by all the norms, or, or if it's coming from someone who is not saying that. Uh, um, so uh, accountability is extremely important uh, if we are going to have norms and the norms uh, are to be followed. Um, at the same time, uh, I, um, um, you know, I, I beyond, the, as I said, uh, if you have the technical capabilities, you may be able to, but the verification uh, or uh, accountability, um, it, you know, you, you have, yeah, I guess it, 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 uh, it ultimately goes to how much you trust the other side about what they are saying. Um, but uh, accountability is extremely important, I think, if we are to ask countries to follow the norms. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, Isaac, uh, over to you if you have any thoughts on this. Thank you for the opportunity, just briefly. Um, and I would like to, to uh, um, go back to the uh, general idea put on the table by Kaja on the reporting, on the idea of sharing what we have been advancing or what we have been uh, founding that it's impossible to advance. I mean, the obstacles, not only, not only the good news, but also the, the bad news. Um, and uh, this, this um, um, uh, initial ideas on reporting is a way to approach to accountability at, at, at an initial step, I will say. Of course, it is challenging all regarding accountability. Of course, it is challenging um, um, for the, I mean, for the operational side, but also at the discussions, at the uh, UN discussions and regional discussions. But uh, I do believe insisting on the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process, uh, which actually we are involved, all of us, um, that perhaps reporting implementation of the, of the framework that we already have, for instance, as Ambassador have said, on the norms, uh, will be key to um, um, getting a, a better approach on accountability and possible standardized common accountability processes, which, by the way, not necessarily is it's the goal, the general goal, but uh, it will be great uh, to see how uh, in a step-by-step -step process we can approach to uh, that uh, aim uh, uh, accountability and, 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 and elements related to accountability. Thanks. Thank you very much, Isaac. We are running short of time. I would just like to give the floor to Kaya for her uh, last thoughts, if uh, she has uh, about the issue, and then we have to wrap up the panel. Thanks. I'll say two things. I think first on the previous question, um, I think it's it's also important to think about you know how do you bring new new actors in, even just government to government actor actors. Uh, creatively. And I'll, I'll actually use an example of uh, what uh, the UK did earlier this week uh, as part of their um, Commonwealth Cybersecurity Capacity Building Initiative, uh, where they brought together, and we participated as well, where they brought together a number of countries across a Africa, not necessarily in sort of within the, the African Union context, but within the Commonwealth con context. And it was a capacity building effort, but a lot, a large parts of the work or the sessions were countries sharing information with each other on what they're doing and how they're doing it. And I, I'm sure no one thought about it as a confidence building measure at the time, but it is exactly what it was. So I think initiatives like this and examples like this, I think are also report, important to keep in mind. On accountability, I would just say, um, I think we definitely need it, uh, agreed with it. I think uh, what also is needed in this space is increasingly um, states, um, bad actors being called out when they are not accountable and not just in terms of like, you're a bad person, uh, but also just calling out what particular norm was breached as part of the process or what particular international law or agreement was uh, uh was that it, that they, they they basically were not help not being accountable to so i think that will also help over time um a deter a bad act about actors but also build confidence in, in the ones that that act responsibly
Thank you very much, Kaya. Uh, I thank you again, uh, all of you, for uh, joining uh, uh, to this panel and for sharing your thoughts. And uh, we talk a lot. Uh, I mean, the, tof the focus of the of the topic was, of the panel was CBMs, uh, but as we uh, mentioned in, in several occasions, CBMs are also connected and linked to uh, capabilities. And indeed, uh, the uh, next panel is actually uh, uh, going to focus on, uh, on capacity building. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, a quick break, and we're back uh, with the next panel.